But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Hey guys, what is going on? Chris here with Shughead Gaming, bringing you my review for Creed Rise to Glory. Developed by Servios and releasing on Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and PSVR on September 25th for an estimated retail price of $27. Of course, that depends on your region. Creed Rise to Glory challenges both your body and mind as you rise through the ranks and battle to become a champion to be reckoned with. Experience the ascent of Adonis Creed from scrappy underdog to prize fighter. Train with the legendary Rocky Balboa, feel yourself become stronger, and take down opponents in boxing's most iconic rings. A Rocky boxing game in VR for many is a dream come true, but is it a contender? Let's find out. As always, guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for updates, hit that bell icon. As always, graphics are up first. The graphics in Creed Rise to Glory are decent, but I wouldn't say that they're a showstopper. The game has obviously and wisely chosen to go on a different route than last year's Knockout League, choosing to go for a more stylized, realistic look and feel than Knockout League's more animated and cartoonish approach. The result is a game that looks more authentic and feels more immersive, but at the cost of some graphical sharpness. With the exception of some texture detail drop-off as you look beyond about 10 feet in game, Creed looks pretty damn good up close, with characters having enough detail to make you feel like you're in the ring with an actual opponent. Character models have a defined muscle structure and seem to animate fairly well, without too much in the way of janky animations, and they also show visible face damage as rounds begin to pile on. One must keep expectations in check though, as this is still not a huge studio release and as such does not rival the motion capture and physics detail found in this generation's UFC titles. Instead, we have a game that aims to bring a decent amount of detail and polish to the table, then double down on immersion instead. All nine arenas and three training gyms all look the part and bristle with atmosphere. Of particular note for Rocky fans is walking around Mickey's gym, taking in the nostalgia and throwing some punches. Excellent use of perspective is also employed, narrowing the vision and darkening out objects in the distance as a player is beaten into submission. This total sense of confusion and loss of sight really nails how it must feel to be a real boxer and on the losing side of a fist. And ultimately, it proves why VR boxing is amazing. However, the game isn't without its issues. Some characters look practically dead in the eyes, well, hit detection and character animations tend to get a bit wonky when jumping into the PvP online portion of the game. The game also does suffer from some less than great anti-aliasing issues, especially when looking beyond your fight area. This is true both in campaign, PvP, and in the training gyms. Finally, the crowd looks, not surprisingly, sparse, generic, and artificial, but they're still there and still leaps and bounds above what other VR sports games have attempted. The game could use a much needed pro mode. For at launch, it definitely looks more like Servius's first PSVR release, Raw Data, and less like Sprint Vector and Electronauts. This isn't to say the visuals really hurt this game though, for when in the ring, everything around you is very adequate with your gloves and body looking and moving especially well from your point of view. All in all, Creed Rise to Glory is a decent looking game, but could still use some polish. As Servios has proven time and time again, they often stick with games and continue to improve them, so this game will likely only get better visually over the next while. That brings us to sound. Perfect hit from Balboa. Balboa lands a good hit. <laughs> Balboa scores a... But a light touch like that isn't about to knock anyone out. Creed Rise to Glory is a licensed boxing game of the famed Rocky series. As such, it isn't surprising when the game opens with the iconic Rocky theme. As a fan of the series, I found myself with a stupid grin on my face and chills down my back. I was ready to be a contender. Creed Rise to Glory sounds every bit the boxing game you would hope it would. Training gyms and arenas all sound authentic and immersive. The boxing announcers sound good, and while Sylvester Stallone didn't contribute voice work, David Lodge portraying him did a very decent portrayal, as does Avery Kidd Waddell handling voice work for Lil Duke, your first trainer. 
Now a boxing game wouldn't be effective if it didn't nail the sounds of fighting. Luckily, Creed nails this aspect with impact sounds, diverse, authentic, and powerful. Other sound effects like the swoosh of your missed jabs, the pain groans of getting hit, and your character's own out of breath puffing all come into play and complete the sound package of fighting. When in PvP mode, chat is enabled, so anyone looking to get in smack talking during or after an online fight, you're in luck. The sound mix is presented in a nice 3D audio mix and lovingly wrapped with a generous use of some famous Rocky tunes throughout. And that brings us to gameplay. Servios has demonstrated time after time their knack for creating new and effective ways to move in VR. Creed Rise to Glory is no exception, and while much of it works, there does seem to be some room for some tweaking once players jump in and give feedback. So the first thing players will notice when comparing Creed to the other VR boxing game, Knockout League, is that where Knockout League was a rigid, almost rhythm game affair, only allowing players to hit their opponent after the opponent had completed a set of moves, Creed goes for a more sim type of boxing, letting players react and fight in real time, moving, countering, and punching at will and with creativity. The gameplay is super simple in practice, but much deeper upon executing with either an AI opponent or a real-life online partner. The gym is where you can learn and practice your moves, hitting different training devices, running on a treadmill, or even sparring with an AI opponent. Speaking of which, I was disappointed to not have a difficulty setting for one-off training fights, as this really didn't prepare me for medium and hard campaign difficulty. But I digress. Punching in the game is like real life, with a combination of jabs, punches, and uppercuts all being used. Players can move around, block, and duck at will, and at different height points on the body, so learning, blocking, and anticipating your opponent's moves is a must. The game thankfully even goes as far to allow players to punch around players blocking their head. Allowing players to not just block the front of the head for protection is a game changer, and makes delivering haymakers not only possible, but very satisfying. Movement is handled in a few different ways. Looking down, the player will see a play box. Within this area, players are free to move and jockey for position, with some limited room tracking. This can be excellent for sidestepping an opponent, then quickly using the focus button to line up with the player and throw an unprotected punch. For larger movement around the ring, players can pump their arms sprint vector style to walk forward, with face buttons being used for quick turns left and right. To step backwards, players simply place their hands behind them, then pump accordingly to reverse. This form of movement felt silly and unrealistic, especially when in a fight, but fortunately using advanced movement changed the movement to your hands, allowing you to do a rolling punch move to advance. Unfortunately this doesn't change the reverse movement, which at the moment seems quite broken, with reversing attempts in matches often resulting in me taking repeated shots to the face, with my arms behind me attempting to get my fighter to step backwards. Like I said, Servios likes to try new movement schemes, but this one just isn't working. But speaking of innovative control schemes, this brings me to the most important aspect of Creed Rise to Glory, and this is how the game manages stamina in fights. This proves to be massively important in a game with freeform fighting, as stamina prevents players from becoming an unending spinning monster of punches. Everything you do in the ring is rooted in stamina, and communicated to the player through the gloves. Rate of flashing in color indicates to players if they are fatigued and in what arm. Managing this fatigue level is key to success as you must learn when to block and duck to regain stamina and when to use up your stamina in punches. More stamina allows harder punches, and while harder punches do more damage, it also depletes more stamina. This may make certain situations more ideal for quick body shots or jabs to the face, but it is this dance of strategy that is at the foundation of Creed Rise to Glory's gameplay. Get hit too many times, and you will be required to line up your gloves within some floating circles. Get hit more, and this gets increasingly harder. Get knocked down, and your consciousness leaves your body, as you must run back to your body sprint vector style within the 10 second count. After multiple falls, you'll be swinging your arms like a mad person to get back to your body in time. And here lies the genius, for you are now physically spent in real life while your opponent has been resting. It now depends on whether you have enough in the tank in real life to do what it takes to win the match, let alone finish it. However, it is this stamina meter that will likely be the topic of conversation, and one that may get tweaked further as the game hits the market. At launch, the AI seems to be a bit unbalanced at times, with their stamina restrictions seeming more lenient, but a day one patch seems some gameplay tweaks, so I wouldn't worry about these balancing issues moving forward. The campaign consists of nine matches with short training sessions between each. Story is at a minimum, with most of the narrative being told over a radio broadcast post-match in the training gym. 
The campaign can be beat fairly quickly, but bumping up the difficulty to medium and hard sees a huge spike in difficulty that only the true and practice will be able to compete in. With the short campaign, this leaves exhibition fights from the gym, with all nine players, including one Rocky Balboa, and arenas being unlocked from the start, but like I said, not having a difficulty setting here leaves the competition at rookie, and is a bit on the easy side for more seasoned players. However, it is the online PvP section where Creed Rise to Glory will find its continued replay value, and for many, the sole reason to pick this title up. Matchmaking is as easy as picking quick match or simply inviting a friend into your own gym. From here you pick an arena, your fighter, and you're off. Unfortunately, lobbies are restricted to two as it would have been awesome to spectate friends in a match while sitting in the stands waiting for your turn. Those who have played Spark know what I'm getting at, so here's hoping this gets added in a future update as this would be very cool. The gameplay mechanics from the solo campaign are brought over into online play in their entirety, really allowing for some fun and exhausting matches with friends. Online, however, is not without its quirks and plays a little rougher than the single player. At launch, player animations seem to be a little more janky and some weird movement being seen in some situations, and ultimately not appearing as smooth as the AI opponents did. Hit detection also seems to be a little inconsistent, with gloves sometimes going right through a block and registering as a hit still. This made for some really surprising losses and ultimately made the online portion feel a little bit broken. It's still fun as hell, and the best way to experience Creed to its fullest. And with knowledge that Servios is actively looking into this at the time of me writing this review, I have little doubt that it will be rectified very quickly. Creed requires the use of two move controllers, tracking a spot on throughout the game, with the only issue being that sometimes when covering my face, the lights would get confused with the headset lights and cause a bouncing effect on screen. This really wasn't an issue once I learned to keep them slightly higher or lower though, so no worries there. Of note is that some may think their hands have lost tracking when in a fight, this is most likely the result of a fatigue mechanic in which your hands become unaligned with your on-screen gloves, with a delay in lining up. This is showing you that you are getting beaten up and not that your tracking is off. This game is played standing with a decent amount of space being required as you will be dancing left and right and throwing punches, so watch your TV as I almost haymakered mine a few times. Motion sickness should be at a minimum as you are standing in place, but for those who still might find the walking and running parts bothersome, please be aware there are no comfort options. And that brings us to Fun Factor and my final review. All in all, Creed Rise to Glory is the boxing game that we all hoped Knockout League would be. This is a real boxing game in VR, in which you decide how to fight. It's a very fun and dynamic boxing game that delivers a competent boxing experience in both single player and online, and despite some rough edges, another win for Servios. As you know, I rate games on a basis of buy, wait for a sale, or burn it to the ground. Even if you're not a boxing fan, Creed Rise to Glory is a fun and quality VR experience. Yes, this is most definitely a very physical game, and not for those who just want to chill on the couch. This is for those that really want to dive into VR and physically interact on a realistic level with their games. Despite some tweaks being required here and there, if this appeals to you, then this is a definite buy and another quality PSVR title to add to our ever-growing collection of fantastic titles. Guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys in my next video.